we have previously seen the hexagonal primitive structure. We can think of each of the hexagonal layers as being identical and stacked directly on top of the layer below it to make an A, 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 A pattern. So in this particular model, the A atoms are the ones at the corners, and we see that they're each is stacked directly over the layer below it. Now if we add a second atom of the same element into the trigonal indentations formed by the A layer, we have the B layer and a new structure, the hexagonal closed pack, HCP. So here, these are the A atoms here, and then this is the B layer. So we get an A, B, A, B pattern, we continue to stack. HCP is one of the most important crystal structures, particularly for metals. It shares the title of densest packed structure with the face-centered cubic structure. Now notice that there are eight atoms at the corners of this rhombohedral unit cell. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four in the layer below. <clears throat> Each counts as one eighth, so they each contribute one atom to the unit cell. There's a second atom completely inside the cell, which we see right there. That's completely inside the cell, so that counts as one. So that's the B layer. So we see that the hexagonal closed path structure has two atoms per unit cell. And we can also see this more clearly by just taking a single unit cell. You bring the single unit cell down here. Here we see, and we have the eight atoms at the corner, and then we have the one inside. Now, one feature of this particular model is that we can open it up, and it demonstrates that there is a mirror plane going through the B layer. So that's an individual unit cell. Here we have an assembly of four unit cells, and one of the nice things about this kind of assembly is it allows us to see, even though we have rhombohedral unit cells, they combine together to form an hexagonal pattern. So we can see the one, two, three, four, five, six neighbors to this particular atom, and we see the hexagonal shape. Suppose now that we change the identity of the atom in the B layer. And we can see that here because the A layer is purple, and the B layer, kind of slide this over a little bit more, you can see is brown. So that shows us that we have two different types of atoms, so two different elements. Conceptually, this might remind us of the change going from the body-centered cubic structure to the cesium chloride structure. Now, in this case, there's two different ways to achieve that sort of transformation. If we maintain the ABAB structure, so that the A atoms are directly over the A atoms, and the Bs are directly over the Bs, we get the tungsten carbide WC structure. And no, the WC does not stand for water closet. So let's see what that looks like by adding a second layer. So to get the tungsten carbide, you would put these so that this particular B is directly over that B. And we can continue filling these in by adding more unit cells in this sort of a manner. So in this case, we get the tungsten carbide structure. And we can see from the side that the purples are directly over top of each other. Those are the A layers. And the brown atoms are also directly on top of each other. And those are the B layers. So this gives us the tungsten carbide structure. Another feature of these particular models is, again, we can break them open in half. And this shows us where the have a mirror plane. Put that back there. For the second arrangement, we can treat each of these models as half of a unit cell rather than an entire unit cell. 
To get the complete unit cell, we have to rotate the top half 180 degrees relative to the bottom half. So you can take the top half. If you kept it like this, we have the tungsten carbide structure. But now we're going to rotate it 180 degrees so that now what was formerly the B layer, it's a little hard to see there, but you can see from here that we have an alteration. Instead of the first B is down here, the second B is over this side. So the A's are still lined up, but the B layers are sort of staggering. So therefore, we need two of these pieces together to make a single unit cell. This is what we call the nickel arsenide structure. Now, we can think of it more formally as an HCP arrangement of arsenic atoms. So the arsenic atoms are the brown, where we have nickel atoms, the purples, and the octahedral holes. So let's continue and add these in here to kind of continue our nickel arsenide structure. Knock them over, okay. There we go, so nickel arsenide. Now in each half unit cell, so it shows the half unit cells again, we have the eight atoms at the corners. So each of those counts as one A, so it gets a total of one atom per unit cell. We have one atom entirely inside the unit cell, so that counts as one. So we have one nickel and one arsenic and a half of a unit cell. If we combine together to make a full unit cell, we have two nickels and two arsenic atoms. Therefore, we have for this particular structure, four atoms per unit cell. For our last structure, we will examine one of the allotropic forms of carbon, graphite. Previous episodes have displayed the diamond structure and the Buckminster Fullerene C60 structure. So now we have the third of the allotropic forms. Note for graphite that there are two layers per unit cell, and then we can notice the hexagonal sp2 hybridized carbons. Let's take a look at that. So if we pick up one of the unit cells, there we go, and essentially two layers. We have one layer there, this layer continues there. So when we put them together, we can start to make out the hexagonal structure. So we can kind of make out and from here to here, then we have a hexagonal shape of the sp2 hybridized carbon. We also get the same thing uh, on the lower levels, which is a little trickier here to see, but you'll have to do that with the, mo the models yourself, and you'll be able to look at it from various different angles, and you'll be able to see that we have another layer inside here, which also forms an equivalent arrangement. Now notice that this layer and this layer are staggered relative to each other, but these layers, these atoms particularly line up. So this is a more complicated structure than a simple hexagonal closed pack structure, for example. Now, between the two layers, there are only weak London forces. So therefore, the, the layers of these hexagons are parallel to each other, and they can slide past each other. Now, because of this, we can understand directly from its structure that graphite is going to be an excellent lubricant. Recall, for the diamond structure, each diamond atom was sp3 hybridized and tetrahedrally coordinated. So it had strong bonds in every single direction. Therefore, diamond is among the hardest known substances, whereas graphite is very soft and acts as a lubricant. One thing to keep in mind, uh, we hope you liked the videos. Be sure to subscribe. And then coming soon for episode 16 will be called Miller Time. Thanks for watching.